There's a word in mathematics you might have always been curious about what it means and what it involves, and that is trigonometry. And it's quite an interesting word itself, isn't it? Trigonometry. Where does it come from? It actually comes from Greek, and the first cool part is trigonon, which means triangle. The hint is the tri, which is like three. And metron which is where we get our word for measure, as in geometry. So we can guess that trigonometry is going to be about measurements to do with triangles. But I'll be honest, that doesn't really help me. I want to know what trigonometry actually is. OK, for that, we're going to need a triangle, as you might be able to guess. So then we can try some trigonometry. Mm, OK. This triangle is right angled, and for this video in trigonometry, we're only going to focus on right angled triangles. We can tell it's right angled because there'd be a little box in the corner, like so. That box is a 90 degree angle, making the triangle right angled. And to begin our investigation of trigonometry, we're, need, we're going to need to pick one of these two angles the two remaining angles as our perspective, as our viewpoint. We're going to need to stand at one of these two angles and look around our triangle. Imagine like you're entering a room and we need to pick which door we're going to enter in, down here or up here. Which one do you reckon? This one, you say? Okay, let's do this one. That angle could indeed be any angle. It could be 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 50 degrees, anything. But for this video, I'm going to label it with a weird Greek name. Because trigonometry comes from Greek, as a kind of favour to them, we're going to label our angle theta. Don't let that put you off. Theta just means, it's th in Greek, and it just means any angle. It could be anything you want. 15 degrees, anything. That's our angle. Now, let's talk about the three walls of the room, the three sides of the triangle. First, how about this long side here? The one that goes all the way across and that is opposite the right angle. Let's give that a name. The name of that side is hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And it's the longest side that's always opposite the right angle. So the longest side of the triangle opposite the right angle. The right angle is here, and so opposite is always going to be the hypotenuse. Let's pick another side. How about the side down here, which is touching the angle theta, which is our angle? And it's also touching the right angle. Let's label that side the adjacent. That's a kind of a strange name to give it. Why are we calling it the adjacent? We call it the adjacent because adjacent means touching or next to. So it's touching or next to our angle and also the right angle. There we are. So the adjacent side is the side which is next to the angle you're focusing on. Let's take a moment to reflect though. If we'd have picked this angle up here instead, the adjacent would have been the other side, wouldn't it? Say we picked this angle up here. Now the side in yellow would be our adjacent, because that's the side which is touching the angle and the right angle. So I can tell what you're thinking. It does matter which angle you pick. If we'd have picked this angle up here, this side would be our adjacent. But because we picked this angle in the bottom right, the side in red is our adjacent. Admittedly, the hypotenuse would have been the same either way. How about our final side, the side that's furthest away from our angle? That side is the opposite. You can kind of guess why we call it the opposite. So the opposite side is furthest away 
furthest away from our angle. And again, if we'd picked the angle up here, the opposite side would have been the side in red, and the adjacent would have been the side in orange. But because we picked theta, this angle down here, the side in red was the side that was touching it. So that's the adjacent, and the side in orange was furthest away. So that's the opposite. But I thought we were talking about trigonometry and the relationships and measuring different bits. What's all this about sides? Why do we need to know adjacent, hypotenuse, opposite, and that kind of stuff? It's because we have these special names for the relationships between those sides. You can think of this triangle as like a love triangle, and each of the sides have these special relationships with each other. For example, what about the relationship or the ratio between the opposite and the hypotenuse? So the opposite divided by the hypotenuse is just another word for like its ratio. It's the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse. We call that sine. So sine is the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse. It's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So if the opposite was 5 and the hypotenuse was, say, 11 centimetres, we would do 5 divided by 11. But remember we talked about how it really made a big difference which angle we picked? Like the opposite side would change if we picked a different angle and things like that. So whenever we give our name, so in this case sine, we have to give the angle that we're using. Many students just write sine equals, for example, 5 divided by 11. But they need to write down which angle they're using. In this case, the door we're standing at is the theta. Or the angle we're using is theta. So it's going to be sine of theta, which equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Let's pick a different relationship. I'm getting bored with that relationship. How about the relationship between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Are they getting on? Do they have something going on? A bit of chemistry going on? They do actually have a bit of chemistry going on, you know? They met when they're young. It's starting to get a bit interesting. And that's the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. The word we have for that is cosine. Or cos. It's short for cosine. I'll just write the, the long names down here. So we have sine and cosine so far short for cos. Now again it matters which angle we pick so we can't just write cos we always have to give the angle as well. So it's cos of theta which equals the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Why do we have to keep mentioning which angle it is? Because as I say if we picked a different angle the opposite would be a different side. The adjacent would be a different side. Finally what about the relationship between the opposite and the adjacent? Opposite and adjacent. We have a name for that as well. You might be surprised to learn. The ratio between the opposite and the adjacent we call tan. One thing you might be thinking of is does it matter whether it's adjacent divided by the opposite or opposite divided by adjacent? It does actually matter. So sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Cos is always the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And tan is the opposite divided by the adjacent, not adjacent divided by opposite. Tan, by the way, is short for tangent. Okay, there's our three relationships in our love triangle. But how would we remember all of that? That's quite a lot of confusing words to remember. Here's a way that generations after generations of mathematicians have remembered these relationships. It is the magical Sokatoa. Sine is the relationship between the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cos is the relationship between the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And tan is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Sine, opposite divided by hypotenuse, so. Cos, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, ka. And tan is opposite divided by adjacent. Now, it does matter how you spell that and the order it is, because, as I said before, we have to get the order right to get the relationship in its correct place. 
So there is Sokatoa, the key dynamic of triangles and the measurement of angles and sides, Sokatoa. Let's give you a quick question, a, a quick glimpse of how it, this might actually be used for a real question. Say we had a triangle down here, and it's right angled, as we said, for trigonometry, and I gave you two of the sides. And we were looking for this angle. And you can imagine all sorts of situations in real life while you might want to find that angle. Putting up a shelf or measuring a distance, anything like that. This could be six centimeters, six kilometers, could be anything. But what relationship is this deal dealing with? This angle is in the middle of a complex relationship between six and eight. Which one is it? Here, the six is touching the angle and touching the right angle. See, it's this side along here, touching the right angle and touching the angle. So it is the adjacent. Yes. The eight is opposite the right angle and it's the longest side of the triangle. So it's the hypotenuse. What did we call the relationship between the adjacent and the hypotenuse? That's cosine or cos. So in our next video, we're going to see how with a calculator and just this simple love triangle of Sokatoa, we can actually find out what that angle would be.